How a closed terrarium can live for decades with no water added. For starters, the terrarium has its own water cycle. Since no water can escape, the same water molecules keep knocking around in that bottle, getting sucked up by the plant's roots and then transpired out of its leaves, condensing on the sides of the container and running back down the sides and into the soil. On Easter Sunday, 1960, David Latimer, an electrical engineer from Surrey, England, washed out a 10-gallon, 38-liter glass carboy or, or jar that at one time had held sulfuric acid. And as he told Daily Mail, he filled it with compost, nestled a single spiderwort seedling at the bottom with a little water and corked it. Latimer then, sud then stuck it under a stairwell in his house where it got plenty of indirect sunlight and turned it around every so often so the foliage grew evenly. For over 60 years, Latimer's closed terrarium, the experiment has thrived with almost no interference. It's a completely self-sustained ecosystem. Only once has the carboy been opened in 1972. He uncorked it to toss in a little water. In this way, the terrarium serves as an ultra-simplified model of how life on our planet sustains itself. It's self-sufficient as long as it gets all the sunlight it needs. A closed terrarium like Latimer's works because it replicates three basic cycles we see on Earth, the water cycle, the oxygen cycle, and the nutrient cycle. For starters, the terrarium has its own water cycle since no water can escape. The, the same water molecules keep knocking around the bottle, getting sucked up by the plant's roots, transpiring out of its leaves, condensing on the sides of the container, running back down the sides and into the soil. The plant is kept alive much in the way all plants in ecosystems the world over make it work. Aerobic er, bacteria from the compost eat the dead plant matter, making more nutritious soil for the plant to use. The bacteria also use up the oxygen released from plants and transform it into carbon dioxide, which is necessary for the plant to photosynthesize. Latimer did not plan to toss together what would become the oldest terrarium in the world. In fact, he did not even mention it to anybody until he took photos into BBC Garden Question Show to ask whether his experiment would be of any interest to the professionals. Latimer plans to either pass the terrarium on to his children or leave it to the Royal Horticultural Society. Latimer's bottle does not have insects in it, but some closed terrariums can sustain populations of insects or snails. And this is on Collective Spark by Jesslyn Shields, How Stuff Works. But uh, I have to tell you that recently in 2004, when scientists sent up a, 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 satel a, a, a satellite, a special a craft, to test the auroras to uh, see the magnetic field of the Earth over the North Pole, they found that above our atmosphere, we have uh, tons of uh, small comet-like uh, celestial bodies impacting our atmosphere there, bringing a lot of water with them. Tons of water every month. So uh, that's uh, also supplying Earth with more water from these celestial objects. This is on Collective Spark. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box.